<laughs> the the office of the special prosecutor acknowledge your the petition on this uh, controversial thirty four point nine million dollar ambulance spare parts deal approved by the former finance minister. Subsequently, the Ministry of Health issued a statement on this. And then now the company itself has also issued a statement responding to some of the issues that you, some of the to Black have put out there um, concerning their contract with the, the government of Ghana, the Ministry of Health. Service Ghana Auto Group Limited. But I want us to have a graduated conversation. So this is what the Minister of Health put out in that statement in responding to the issues that you had raised. And would I want you to respond to those specific issues they put out. Then we'll go into what the company is saying because of the issues that have come up. First of all, the, the Minister of Health first indicated that one, the claim that you make that the government has entered into an agreement with Service Ghana Auto Limited for procurement of ambulance spare parts for 307 at a cost of 34.9 million. Two, this translates into, and we'll put it on the screen, this translates into 113.6, that's, that's about $114 per thousand, ambulance. Hundred, yeah, $113,000. Mm. Yeah. Even though checks show a modern fully equipped ambulance cost less. Let's open that Ministry of Health folder and, and put the, the, let's put it on the screen. And then also um, Service Ghana Auto Group Limited has so far made 653 million. That was the allegation that you made. And key director of service ghana auto group limited is a business associate of two daughters of president kufuado jankroma and edwina you also make the point that following and here's the minister of health response that following procurement of ambulances the cost of maintenance was catered for by the ministry of special development initiatives the rule was later handled by the Special Development Secretariat. The Ministry of Health requested for LOCs to be raised for Services Ghana Auto Group Limited. They also say that the Finance Ministry replied that it could only finance $10 million out of the $34.9 million. The Finance Ministry recommended that the Ministry of Health looks into the NHIA to, for financing. NHIA replied that it was unable to finance the project. The company has not been paid $34.9 million. They say that there is some $10 million that the finance ministry said at, the, at that time that they could make available out of the $34.9 million. Eventually, the Minister for Health, Dr. Bernardo Coboy, appeared before your committee, the Assurances Committee, and you asked this same question on, the, on this ambulance spare parts deal. I want us to hear the minister as to whether some ten million dollars has been paid as we speak or not. Take a look. Of the public interest, I spoke to one of the um, deputy governors who have a working relationship when I was at health insurance, and the deputy governor made me aware that this is lodged with them, but not even a dollar has been given to the provider. She used some terms, like I said, I'm not a finance person, that it is actually a letter of credit, that it is when the provider has actually performed, supplied parts to certain tunes and supplies the work executed, that they are empowered to pay for the work done. And so the governor had made me understand that they have it with them, but they've not paid. Again, the processes, controller to BOG, BOG saying we've not paid any amount. All these are tales which a state uh, actors should be willing to give information. I, I deliberately didn't make my PR team put in this part of BOG not having paid a dollar because I believe that uh, they also as an organization 
if called upon, should be able to say it for themselves. But I'm saying all this so that those watching know that all actors, um, once they are in the process, should be armed with relevant documents to show what they've done. Who signed the contract? Did you, have you seen the contract? Whatever is required of us, once there are documents or activities that we as a ministry have engaged in, we'll make it available. So can we get a copy of the contract? We want to see a copy of this $34.9 million contract. Honorable Chair, any document, which is a public document executed on our books, is for public record. It is only if it is not a record executed within my end that will suffer difficult. But otherwise, we don't have a problem with that. We should receive this report by next week. Um, it should be added to the outstanding request that we... Well, that's uh, the chair of the Assurances Committee, Samlokudoto Ablakwa, who is our guest. And so the directive is that by, by next week... Yeah you should get a full report, including the contract details mm -hmm. of this Service Ghana Auto Limited and the Ministry of Health on the maintenance of the mm -hmm. over 300 ambulances. Yeah. The minister says not a dollar has been paid. Mm. Contrary to what you put out earlier. Well, so first of all, let me state that the evidence I have seen. Mm -hmm. I hold in my hands the payment vouchers <clears throat> from GIFMES uh, to Service Ghana Auto Group Limited. Indeed, all of these documents here on this part of the table. You can, all you of can, this? Yes, are payments made since 2020. I to, see. Yes. All these documents? Yes, are, all these documents. Yes. All and of it. You can, have, you can see a copy of that. Yeah. So <clears throat> when I don't have the documents, the, the invoice if registers. I haven't seen the, the evidence, I don't talk about it. Now, <clears throat> you, can, you can read this to viewers. Um, this is the $10 million, which amounts to $120 million. Uh, no, you don't have that one. Those are other payments okay. that have been made. But the $10 million payment, mm -hmm. 23rd February, 2024. 2024. Mm -hmm. And what do you see here? Being released of funds for, for the, the establishment, establishment of letters of credit to procure spare parts for 307 unit ambulance vehicles. Who did the money go to? Service Ghana Auto. Group Service Ghana Auto Group Limited. So, so that's it. That's the evidence. And uh, when, I, when, I, when we put out information, we make sure that we have done our checks. We have the documents. We have evidence. And it is important to emphasize, Alfred, that this is the same ministry. Not too long ago, during the Sputnik V scandal, when we told them that evidence we have suggests that Ghana has lost 2.4 million dollars. Pay to those shonky sheikhs, imposters, who came here. I had a meeting with the Russian ambassador to find out if the Ghanaian government, the health ministry, the foreign ministry, had contacted them. Sputnik V is a vaccine manufactured in Russia. Mm -hmm. Every other government was using bilateral diplomatic channels. Mm -hmm. And you get a better deal. You are sure of the efficacy, the genuineness of the vaccine. Mm -hmm. Our health minister, when he finally appeared before the ad hoc committee, he says mm -hmm. he was under pressure, he wasn't really thinking straight, mm -hmm. you know, and so decided to deal with these shonky shakes. Clear imposters. It has now been confirmed that Ghana lost $2.4 million. Paid to those shakes, yes. And this so, <clears throat> so anytime the health ministry of Ghana tells you that a payment has not been made. Please treat it with a pinch of salt. They are track record. They should be telling us how the $2.4 million will be retrieved from those imposters who showed up here claiming to be Sheikh, but Sheikh Matum and, and, and others. Now, let me come to yes. the scandal itself. And you see, the good people of Ghana, this matter is no joke. If you put all the sums involved together, we are talking about a $108 million transaction. $108 million. Yes, if you put all the pieces together. $108 million. Remember that 
My parliamentary oversight has now led us to an incontrovertible, irrefutable, unimpeachable, impeccable conclusion that is the same characters who procured the ambulances. So you need to start from the $54.3 million confirmed by the Auditor General, I have a copy of the Auditor General's report, mm -hmm. that we spent procuring the ambulances. Inflated. It was inflated by over $29 million. You say inflated. So, oh, uh, so don't worry, I'll come to that. I want us to establish the figures. Mm -hmm. So $54.3 million to import these ambulances. The same characters. Mm -hmm. Then you need to also add the $34.9 million on spare parts, which Kanufriata instructed on the 9th of February, a few days before he left office during the Valentine reshuffle of, mm -hmm. of this year. Few days. $34.9 million. Add that to 54.3. Then when you also go through these payment vouchers mm, from GIFMIS, mm -hmm. you see that between 2020 and 2023, this same Service Ghana Auto Group Limited has been paid 115 million Ghana cities. So if you put all of these figures together, we are talking about a $108 million scandal. It's such a staggering amount, a colossal figure. So, mind you, this $108 million, mm -hmm. they are our taxes. If we could have gotten the same services, the same ambulances, and the after sale maintenance for 40, even $50 million, we could have used the remaining 60 or $70 million to address all the, ch the challenges we have in the health sector. Not too long ago, the former health minister appeared before us in parliament and told us that this country, we have only four functioning MRI machines. Can you believe that? Only four in our public health institutions. Only four. Confuanoche, it wasn't long ago when the doctors there told us that they are turning away dialysis patients because they don't have equipment. We remember how 19 people died at the Reyna unit in Kolebu, mm -hmm. because we didn't have consumer books. On a daily basis, people are dying. When the Honorable Okoboy appeared before the Assurances Committee this week, mm -hmm. he told us that the last time the government of Ghana did a re-equipping of our hospitals was in 2011. Can you believe that? 2011. 2011. 13 years ago. So they are now, and we encourage him to hurry up, they are now putting together a new program to re-equip our hospitals. The last time, there was a national re-equipping of our hospitals. 2011. 2011. And I know it because I regularly have to collaborate with NGOs abroad to import medical equipment. Else, people will just die in my constituency. You know, we don't have the medical equipment. 2011. So let's put this figure in context. And what all of these huge sums which have gone into this dubious transaction what it could have done for the health sector, just the health sector alone. Now, I also have here, I'm just, I'm still laying foundation, putting this matter in proper context. I hold in my hands the annual public debt report. And viewers, you will be shocked at some of the quantums, the sums that our president, vice president, finance minister, go around the world, begging other governments, other banks, to support us with, in loans loans. This is the annual public debt report. 2022. Hmm? Sunyani Water Expansion Project, Phase 2. We went for a loan of only $18 million. Loan? Yes, loan for water. We say we didn't have money for water, so we went for a loan. Hmm? Kolebu Teaching Hospital Project, we went for a loan, $19.2 million from Standard Chartered Bank. Construction of five general hospitals at OCM, Asin Kushia, Doma, Akwamu, Wafi, and, and Kutre. We went for a loan of $77.6 million. We said we didn't have the money here. We went for a loan. Construction of five general hospitals in Bogatanga. We went for a loan, $39.5 million. It's all here. 37 military hospital expansion. We said we didn't have the money. $84 million. That's also a loan. A loan. Which we are paying with it. All of this are below the $108 million that we are giving to these, you know, people with familiar ties to the president's 
you know, family. West Africa food system resilience. To feed ourselves, we said we didn't have the money. We need a loan from the World Bank, $2.8 million. So these are the sums. The sums we go and borrow. That always we are called, we are called upon to come to parliament to approve. Establishment of assembly plan for agriculture inputs in Ghana, $24.9 million. Green credit line from Federal Republic of Germany, $23 million. I can go on and on. See, see the poultry sums. We go about begging. And you see our presidents, they are kneeling, they, are, yeah, they give them all kinds of conditionalities. Sometimes they talk to them anyhow. I have not seen uh, the president uh, kneel uh, before. Oh, uh, no. Are you no, in this? You even hear how they tell them that, look, some legislations you can't sign when it's about your values, LGBTQ and all of that. Do you know why, why some of those legislations could not be signed? Hmm? It's because of these sums. Mm -hmm. So let us put the figure in context. $108 million. Okay. That is what we are discussing. Now let me come to what the, the scandal is about. So, mm -hmm. I intercepted these documents where the Honorable Ken Oforiata, on the 9th of February, signed a letter, two letters, one mm -hmm. to the health minister and another to the control accountant general that same day. So, I don't put, put, go you back. Before you, you go on to this, yeah. the, the, the material facts of the issue, the document that I have, yeah. which you gave me, yes. the invoice register, yes. The specific reference to the the 120.7 million yes. over 120.7 million that per the date of 23rd of February 2024 was yeah. as you indicated paid to Service Ghana Auto Group Limited. Yeah. The narration I see yes. is this 127 points 120.7 million Ghana CDs. Yes is the release of funds for the establishment of letters of credit mm -hmm. to procure spare parts for 307 unit ambulance vehicles. I'm listening to the health minister saying, yes, letters of credit indeed have been issued, but no payment has been made as yet. <laughs> that, that was what he said yes. before you. Yes. Does the LC's issuance mean essentially the, the, the payment has been made? When because this is the same matter in this yes. Atu Forcing, yes. Dr. Atu Forcing. When an LC is issued, the finance minister gives an instruction to the control accountant general and he proceeds to release the funds. It is lodged at the Bank of Ghana. It is in the name of the company, Service Ghana Auto Group Limited. Mm -hmm. Is their money? They can go for it any time. It's been released. See, but as, as of now, if, if the minister says let me read, not let even me, a dollar has let been me, Let me read the letter from Ken of Riata. I mm -hmm. think it will put everything in perspective. 9 February 2024, and it's signed by Ken of Riata, as you can see. Please refer to the Ministry of Health letter number MOHK 0317-17-01, data since December 2023 on the above subject. Authority is hereby conveyed to you to release the sum of $10 million dollars to the Minister for Health to enable him pay for the procurement of spare parts for 307 Mercedes-Benz printer 305 CDI ambulances. I see. The amount of $10 million being the equivalent of $120,711,000 mm -hmm. when converted at the exchange rate of $1 to 12.0711 Ghana cities should be charged as per the attached specific warrant. The Control Accountant General is also requested to arrange with the Bank of Ghana to establish letters of credit to the tune of $10 million, which amounts to $120.7 million, when converted at an exchange rate of 1 is to 12.07. By copy of this letter, the Chief Director of Ministry of Health is being informed that any unforeseen charges that may arise because of this transaction will be charged to the Ministry of Health's 2024 Goods and Services budget. Thank I see. You. So, per this letter... And this was a letter written by Ken Ofriata. By Ken Ofriata. On the 9th of February. 9th of February. And by 23rd February, the Contrary Accountant General has acted. But from give me five days after all, that's when he was reached out. Yes, that's, so, so yes, just five days before he left the ministry, five days before the reshuffle. And it is important to stress that, look, this $10 million is out of the window. There's been a commitment 
the documents are very clear, the release cannot be disputed. But you see, let's even come to the meat of the matter. This $34.9 million, is there basis for this? Fundamentally, before any release of funds, you need parliamentary approval. The Ghanaian constitution is very, very clear. Very, very clear under Article 178. And we all know that. No money shall be withdrawn from the consolidated fund except A, to meet a expenditure that is charged on that fund by this constitution or by an act of parliament. Mm -hmm. B, where the issue of those monies has been authorized by an appropriation act or by a supplementary estimate approved by resolution of parliament passed for the purpose. So under the Ghanaian constitution, we all know that no funds can be released if you don't have parliamentary approval. Mm -hmm. When the Honorable Health Minister appeared before us, we asked that question. Do you have parliamentary approval? Because I have all the budgets here, 2023, 2024. You will not find $34.9 million for spare parts in there. When you go through the NHI formula, I have all the national health insurance formulas here, mm -hmm. approved by parliament. You can go through. You will not find any $34.9 million. So mm -hmm. on what authority did Kenoforiata write these letters saying that he will pay $10 million from his ministry, and then NHI should pay the balance of $24.9 million. Let me, read, let me read that letter to you. Mm -hmm. Also, 9 February. Please refer to the Ministry of Health letter, MOHKO3. I've read that mm -hmm. uh, reference already. We write to acknowledge receipt of your request for an amount of $34 million, United States dollars for the procurement of spare parts for the maintenance of the 307 Mercedes-Benz ambulances purchased in 2019. Hmm. The ministry is able to fund up to the tune of $10 million out of the amount requested and recommended that the Ministry of Health finances the difference through the National Health Insurance Authority. It's here, mm -hmm. counting on your usual cooperation. And this is what the NHIS says, that they, they didn't have the money. Yes. So to... if you read the Ministry of Health's own statement that they issued sometime on the 25th of July, they themselves, in their statement, paragraph 8, they say that the National Health Insurance Authority raised concerns that they don't have the budgetary approval from Parliament. And mm -hmm. so they would struggle to meet that directive. The Honorable Ken Ophrieta ought to have known that. The Chief of Staff, who instructed this, who directed that they should find the funds to take care of this very special company, and I'll come to why they are so special, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They ought to have known. So under the Constitution, Article 178 is very clear. You don't have parliamentary approval. So this, this matter should have come before parliament? Yes. For whatever, a dollar to have even been paid? Exactly. So, yes. so, so they have no business writing these letters, instructing controller to release funds, assuring Service Ghana Auto Group to stand by for their balance, telling NHIA to pay 24.9, when you don't have parliamentary approval, it's, it's so basic, it's so fundamental, and it points to the lawlessness, the impunity. Now, why do I say this company is so special, Service Ghana Auto Group Limited? I hold in my hands here a 2022 Auditor General's report. Look, I haven't read an Auditor General's report so damning. The Auditor General's report is titled Performance Audit Report of the Auditor General on Fleet Management of the National Ambulance Service. Hmm. My brother, if you go through this Auditor General's report, so the this, Auditor General... This audit was specifically on the uh, On the ambulance, fleet, the ambulances. The ambulances. The Auditor General singled out this same company, Service Ghana Auto Group Limited. For what exactly? For extreme condemnation. How? The Auditor General discovered that this company mm -hmm. was giving the ambulances to service when it was not even incorporated. It was not a legal entity. How? They were giving the ambulances in January 2020 to service, but they only got incorporated on April 24, 2020. And four is, months it, after. This is in the Auditor It's General. all here. It's all here. I'm not making anything because up. the company is contesting this that that they they they, they had every right. The read read paragraph 75. Read paragraph 75, page 33 of this report. 
In addition, records from the Registrar General's Department revealed that Service Ghana Auto Group Limited was registered on 24 April 2020. Therefore, from January to April 2020, when National Ambulance Service referred maintenance works to Service Ghana Auto Group Limited, it was not a registered company with the Registrar General's Department. This is the Auditor General. Auditor General. Auditor General. Paragraph 76. Furthermore, Service Ghana Auto Group Limited was registered to do business in the sale of motor vehicles, motor vehicle parts and accessories, but not maintenance of vehicles. That Service Ghana Auto Group Limited did not have the required expertise or skill and labor for the maintenance of the vehicles. This was evident when we visited and inspected the workshops. Service Ghana Auto Group Limited had only one staff at National Ambulance Service Workshop in Accra and two at Kumasi Workshop, specialized in air conditioning. I mean, in air conditions. Yeah. Now, let's, there's, there's a slide on the screen I want to read because it re re responds to some of the things you just read. They said, Service Ghana Auto Limited, this is the statement the company issued. They disagree with the parts of the 2022 performance audit report, but refunded amounts labeled as double payments to National Ambulance Service staff. The Ministry of Finance established a 10 million LC, not direct payment, with loans procured to finance key obligations. That's what they said. That's what the, main, the, the company is saying about this same... Oh, see, but then you, 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 you see, go beyond that. You see, as for this company, mm, they shouldn't have even put out that statement. They have worsened their case. We'll come to that. But you, you were saying their case. the uh, Auditor General... How can you be saying that you disagree with the Auditor General? And yet, when the Auditor General instructed you to do refunds, you have done that. Is that not an admission of guilt? The Auditor General indicted them. Read page 9. Service Ghana Auto Group Limited must refund funds to government. It's here, page 9 of the Auditor General And, they say, and have, they say they have complied. They've, they've and yet, actually done... And yeah. yet, you want to tell us that you disagree with the Auditor General report. I mean, who, who drafted that statement? They said they disagree, and, and but... And they, they are rather reasons. issuing threats, yes. trying to intimidate us, warning us. I mean, look, when you come into the public space to use our fund, public funds, $108 million is what we are discussing. Look at the loans we, we go and take. Mm? You should know that we will subject the transaction to scrutiny. We will demand value for money. Look, there are more dummy findings. Page 35. The Auditor General says that the MOU with Service Ghana Auto Group Limited did not inure to the benefit of the National Ambulance Service. This is the... Clause 1.3 of the MOU with Service Ghana Auto Group Limited stipulates that Service Ghana Auto Group Limited shall provide all necessary labor, professionals, supervisory, and personnel required to perform maintenance services at the National Blood Service Workshops. Proposals made by the company to qualify for the contract to provide services presupposes that Service Ghana Auto Group Limited had the complement of staff at the workshop needed for all works required. In the contrary, we noted during our audit that Service Ghana Auto Group Limited used National Ambulance Service staff to carry out the maintenance of the ambulances. They didn't have their own staff. Can you believe that? They, the, according they to the used Auditor National General, Ambulance Service staff. They used the National Ambulance Service. Yes. And the Auditor General provides more evidence. He said, at National Ambulance Service workshop located in Kolebu and Tafu Agri Director in Kumasi, National Ambulance staff were, were used for maintenance works and their services paid for by the service to Service Gun Auto Group Limited. So when National Ambulance Service does the work, National Ambulance Service, the government, pays this company, Service Ghana Auto Group Limited. So if the, Can you believe if the that? National Ambulance Service had the competence and the manpower to do the work, yeah. then why was the company engaged to do the same work? No. Brilliant question. That's what we are asking. That's what we are so asking. So if the Auditor General's report... And, and, and the, I'm only asking and, this question based on the Auditor from, General's report yes, that you are reading. Yes, Auditor General's report. I mean, this is not me. So if I'm the one saying you can say maybe... I hate the company or its partisanship. This is Auditor General. That the company... The, 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 the Public Account Committee of Parliament has already sat on this. Everything has been confirmed. When you go through this Auditor General's report, the management responses, they, didn't, they couldn't challenge any finding of the Auditor General. They accepted everything. If you like, read page 91, mm -hmm. uh, paragraph 91 of the Auditor General's report. You see the government, the National Blood Service, Management response. Management of National Blaster has agreed to all the findings and recommendations for the implementation. It Actually. stated that the Special Development Initiative Secretary has been informed to review the service maintenance agreement signed with Service Ghana Auto Group Limited. 
And yet, after this, this was in 2022. After this, what will you do if you are the one managing a country, at the finance ministry or the health ministry? Wouldn't you blacklist this company? Rather, Kenneth Furata, before he left office, had to sign a sweetheart deal for his nieces and his nieces' business partners. So this auditor so, report and recommendations accepted by the ambulance yes. was in 2022. 2022. Then a letter in 2024, February. February 2024. After all of these damning findings. Talking about our problem, the payment. After all these made. damning findings, you give these people another contract, $34.9 million, for spare parts. Meanwhile, the Auditor General has determined, if you read this page 24 of this report, that the unit price for this spare part was $80,000. $80,000. So their statement they put out yesterday that they put in the best bid at $133,000. Even that is inflated. And even that $133,000, the gift miss records I have intercepted shows that they were paid more than that. ELOC, for example, ELOC concept was paid $145,000, $145,353 per ambulance. ELOC concept is And ELOC consult is owned by Stephen Okoro, the same Stephen Okoro, who is a key director in Service Ghana Auto Group Limited. So this company was the company that was engaged to procure Procure, the yes. There, there were seven companies engaged. They said they formed a consortium. consortium. Mm -hmm. Same guys, you know. Who then so, later set up so the service they, gun auto group? They procured limited. the ambulances yes. with a different company. With different companies. And then which were hurriedly all the companies were formed between April and September 2017, when President Kufado became president. Mm -hmm. They have no track record in ambulance management, ambulance after sales, no track record. Some of the companies were actually registered for road construction. Can you believe that? Uh, uh, yes. You know the seven the seven companies con companies yes. that formed the consortium. Yes. Somewhere road construction. Oh, road construction, yes. But if but you take, for example, Beft Engineering, it was incorporated April 20, 2017, to do road construction, renovation, civil engineering works. ELO Consult, incorporated July 25th, 2017. That's for the Okoro brothers, Stevie and, and Solomon. And they were the ones who were engaged to procure the ambulances. Yes. Then, and they are the same guys who then went to register Service Ghana Auto Group Limited. For the maintenance of this For the aid. maintenance contract, $34.9 million. Meanwhile, the Auditor General has discovered that unit price is $80,000. If you multiply that by 307, we shouldn't have paid them more than $24.5 million. And yet, we paid them $54.3 million. So, inflated by over $29 million. I see. According to the Auditor, I'm not the one making this up. Read page 2 and page 24 of the Auditor General's report. Mm. So it's incredible. Now, after this damning findings, mm, mm. and don't forget that as all of this was going on, using other staff, staff of National Ambulance Service, we, from the tracking that we have done, the Ghanaian people, paid them a colossal 115 million Ghana cities for, for all of this shoddy work. Why do you describe it as a short ah, word? I'm not the one. Are you listening to the Auditor General? <laughs> ah, let me read more for you. It looks like... I see you want more. You want more. Mm. No, let I me... want to know the details of what the Auditor General is talking about in this, in this <laughs> report. Because if the Auditor General has done an audit yeah. of the work of this company in... Let, let, the ambulance. let me come to page, page 35. Mm. The Dr. General says that national ambulance staff were used for the maintenance works and their services paid for by the service of Service Ghana Auto Group Limited while they were on national ambulance service payroll. At the Kolebu workshop, national ambulance service had six staff and Service Ghana Auto Group Limited had one, only one staff. While at the Kumasi workshop, national ambulance service had five staff Mm -hmm. And Service Ghana Auto Group Limited had two, only two staff. As our observation shows, out of the 14 staff working in both Kumasi and Kolebu workshops, only three are staff of Service Ghana Auto Group Limited. And the rest are National Ambulance. National Ambulance Service. Meanwhile, the payment is made to Service Ghana Auto Group Limited. That is why the Auditor General said they should refund money. And because they, they engage in over invoicing. And they say they have re refunded. In their statement, they issued yesterday, they concede and they say they have refunded the money.
Paragraph 83, despite National Ambulance staff working on the ambulances, Service Ghana Auto Group Limited charge National Ambulance Service for cost of labor for all maintenance activities carried out. The very staff that we found to have carried out the maintenance for which Service Ghana Auto Group Limited invoice National Ambulance Service were on National Ambulance staff payroll. So, just for the benefit of our viewers who are, and our listeners who understand this, so <laughs> the <laughs> National Ambulance Service staff yeah. that were engaged by Service Ghana Auto Limited, yeah. Service Ghana no. invoiced the National so, Ambulance Service. So, the National Ambulance Service staff, they are still on the payroll of National Ambulance Service. They don't have any contract. They were not with, yes. with Service Ghana. Service Ghana Auto Group Limited, because they had a deficiency, they don't have capacity. Mm -hmm. They then use the staff of National, of National Ambulance Service to service the ambulances. And yet, the payment did not go to this staff. It, it went, went to Service, service Ghana, Ghana Auto Group Limited. Yes. But can, you, can you believe that? <laughs> can you believe that? And, and that is why the Auditor General concludes that this contract is it doesn't, it's not in the interest of Ghana. That they have to refund money. That they have engaged in over invoicing. Over invoicing it's a senior lawyer here. Over invoice is fraudulent. It's a crime. It's all here. In the Auditor General's report. In the Auditor General's report. Okay. So, so after this, how on earth will anybody give them a $34.9 million contract for spare parts? And, and you see, you break it down, $34.9 million divided by 307 ambulances. It means we are going to spend $113,000 per ambulance. An ambulance which costs eighty thousand dollars, fully equipped. The spare parts is more than the cost of the ambulance. Hey, I mean, what republic is this? And one more republic? And one more same republic? No. So the fully fitted ambulance. Yes, it's eighty thousand. Let me read. Let me read page twenty-four. Let me read page twenty-four. I'm not the one saying this. Page twenty-four of the Auditor General's report. I have read this Auditor General's report so many times because I can't believe it. It's like a blockbuster <laughs> movie. You know, I've never read anything like this in my life. Never. Hmm? The premium per Mercedes-Benz Sprinter ambulance was $8,000 based on 10% on cost of $80,000 per Mercedes-Benz Sprinter ambulance. So the cost per ambulance is $80,000. And yet, when you come to page two, the Auditor General discovers Pay two of this Auditor General's report that Ghana was bailed. Mm -hmm. We paid 54.3. Let me read the whole paragraph. In 2020, government procured and distributed 307 Mercedes Benz ambulance at a cost of $54.3 million. These ambulances were allocated to 275 constituencies mm -hmm. or ambulance stations in the country. I mean, can you believe that? So, this, this $80,000. Maximum $25 million should be, should have been okay, should have been fine. You let's say, you let's even get to $30 million. Mm. For and mentor. yet, for the, we paid 54.3. And this is just procurement, inflated. Mm. Then you come to the service between 2020 and 2023. We have spent $150 million. They were not using their staff, using National Blunt Service staff. They were engaging over invoicing. That's they didn't, it. even under the contract, they were supposed to provide garages. In their own statement yesterday, they admitted that they don't have any garage in Takradi, they don't have any garage in Ho. They claim that it's because of land litigation. Mm -hmm. Then, another observation. If you read their statement carefully, mm -hmm. they say that the ambulance... Because you're making reference to the, the statement yes, of the, from the, the company. The, the, I, the, I, I, let me do this. Okay. Let's just put portions of the company's okay. statement on the screen. Yeah. And we'll, we'll do a quick response to it, and then we'll round up on this with, with Lawyer Bob and someone coming through. So let's put the, the, the portions of the Service Ghana Auto Limited statement uh, that they issued in response to it as SGAL. It says, first, the procurement process for the 307 ambulances was competitive, not so sourced, with the consortium chosen on merit. So then they put out the seven companies that uh, formed the consortium. Two, the Ministry of Special Development Initiatives initiated the tender process in November 2018. Out of 16 companies, the consortium emerged as the lowest bidder with $113,000 per ambulance. $133,000. Uh, $133,000 per ambulance. Also, 
technical officers from National Ambulance Service, Ghana Health Service, and other ministries conducted comprehensive on-site inspection in Turkey and Amsterdam. SGAGL, the Service Ghana Auto Group Limited, was incorporated on April 24, 2020, after the initial contract, countering claims that the contract was awarded before its incorporation. SGAL disagreed with parts of the 2022 performance audit but refunded amounts labeled as double payments to National Ambulance staff. The Ministry of Finance established a 10 million LC, and in fact, it's quite a lot that yeah. they, 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 they put out. <laughs> And, and, and Alfred, mm. have you noticed the litany of contradictions between this statement and the Ministry of Health statement? Mm. If you read their statement, they are saying that they were given the after sale and servicing contract in December 2019. Yes. When you read the Health Ministry statement of 25th July 2024, mm -hmm. the first paragraph, the Health Ministry says that on September 10, 2020, Let's put the Ministry of Special Development Initiatives mm -hmm. signed a contract with Service Auto Group Limited with the provision of after-sales service and maintenance for yes. 307 Mercedes-Benz Sprinter 315 CD ambulances. Sure. So is it December 2019 or, or September 10, 2020? And indeed, this September 10, 2020 is confirmed by the Auditor General. Yeah. So the Auditor General says September 10, 2020. Meanwhile, the company says that as for them, since December 2019, a year earlier, they had their contract. Can you believe that? I mean, what's going on here? Nothing adds up. Total confusion. Total mayhem. I mean, and, and the, the level of dishonesty. Look, they claim that they put in the best bid, 133,000 per ambulance. Mm -hmm. And they also say that the ambulance type was varied. So they were paid for four by twos and not four by fours. Mm -hmm. It's all in the statement. Yeah. The intercepted payment vouchers, and I'll share copies with you here, mm -hmm. exposes another blatant falsehood by Service Ghana Auto Group Limited. I see. The intercepted payment vouchers show that Ghana paid them for the higher specs, the 4x4, four four, not 4x2. It's here. Particulars of payment. And these are payments made by Ken Ofriata. You see, I have all the payment vouchers here. I see. Pay, being payment of 40 number 4x4 Mercedes-Benz Sprinter 316 CDI ambulances. 4x4. Four four. But the company says in their statement that they, they, were, they were paid for, for, for the 4x2. Four four, four by four two. By two. Then they, it is also not true that they were, they, their bid was 133000 per ambulance. The company, the seven companies, I have their payment vouchers here. For the... They shared it among them, the 40, 40, then one company uh, supplied 35 ambulances. Elo Consult, owned by the Okoros, uh, who is Stephen Okoro, who is a business partner of Jankroma mm -hmm. and uh, Edwina. And I've put out the incorporation documents where um, Stephen Okoro and Jankroma Akufuado set up SFO initiatives. Mm -hmm. But I want us to get there quickly okay. and so you conclude okay. on this matter. Good. So, <clears throat> so the payment vouchers revealed that all these companies were paid between 24th and 27th December 2019. Mm -hmm. The Bank of Ghana exchange rate at the time was $5.5 dollars, uh, 5.5 CDs to a dollar, dollar. to mm -hmm. one dollar. If you do the exchange rate, the 32.2 million that they were paid for the 4x4 Mercedes ambulance comes to 145,353 United States dollars. Mm -hmm. That's for ELO Consult. Then you have, let me give you the list of those who were paid $145,000. Prestige Era Company Limited also okay. paid $145,000. dollars then Luxury World Auto Group also paid $145,000. All these are part of the seven. They are part the, of the, the seven. The consortium They're part of the seven of the consortium. Okay. Now, very interestingly, which confirms the Auditor General's finding that this ambulance could have been bought at $80,000. A company in the consortium called RDC Company Limited, mm -hmm. they were paid $77,000. Mm -hmm. 
for the procurement yes. of the ambulance. For the same ambulance, same specs, same this year. So the how come that the amount varied from one company? Thank you very much. Brilliant question. Then another company called the uh, Blue Mix Company Limited, also in the concern, they were paid $82,000.66. $82,066.57. So $82,000. Same ambulance, same specs, which confirms what the Auditor General discovered, that this ambulance could have been, you know, comfortably delivered at $80,000. And yet people were being paid $145,000. So these 307 ambulances, Ghana could actually have received over 650 of the ambulances. I see. What is it, and, and I'm concluding on this matter with the companies in question, right? Yes. And, and why you keep making references that these, these companies are special, these companies were giving this contract under what you described are questionable circumstances. The company says that they contest that. They did not get this contract under questionable circumstances. They went through the process to get it. What makes them special, really? So when I intercepted these documents and I saw all the circumstances, why would Ken Ofriata leave in office? be so keen on signing this deal and instructing control accountant general to pay $10 million before he leaves the office. I mean, what was his interest? Why was this so urgent, so important? Then I read the Auditor General's report about this company and saw that mm, after all of these damning findings, this company was not blacklisted. Government didn't even decide, that, okay, we will not deal with you any longer. They are rather giving them more money. Then I also discovered that ah, before the $34.9 million, they have paid them 150 million cities for this, you know, shoddy work. Then I find out that it's the same guys who also procured the ambulances at $54.3 million inflated. Like, mm. We need to find out who these people are. They, they must really, I mean, the circumstances are obvious that, look, these are really special guys. So I decided to dig deeper. To my utter shock, the directors of this service, Ghana Auto Group Limited, the directors, you have, when you have uh, so many documents, mm -hmm. uh, you have to go through. And, and I can understand. I yeah. mean, <laughs> this, this table is, yeah. is yes. filled with documents and, in fact, this ambulance conversation leads us to the next, which is still on ambulance. <laughs> and the good thing for this conversation is that we have one of the lawyers of Dr. Atto Forsen, the minority leader, joining us in the studio for this all-important conversation. Yes, so, so I found that document. The, yes. So the directors of Service Ghana Auto Group Limited, Osman Inusa, Kalilu Dauda, Stephen Okoro. Mm -hmm. Take note of Stephen Okoro. And take note of Alvin Menson. Alvin Menson and Stephen Okoro. Stephen Okoro. And there's Mohamed Nurula, Charles Oponchecheku. It's another interesting thing. You wonder what due diligence was done. You see Charles Oponchecheku. This is image that this is an ex-convict in the judgment of the court. He was not supposed to engage in business. This is all being confirmed now. Uh, and if you read the Herald newspaper of yesterday, you see that. Uh, Samuel Bannerman. So these are the directors. Now... <coughs> Stephen Okoro in particular, I discovered that Stephen Okoro is a long-time business partner of Jankrumah Akufwado and Edwin Akufwado. So he's a long-time business partner? Yes. How? Where? How do you prove that? From incorporation documents I have intercepted, on the 9th of August 2013, Stephen Okoro and Jankrumah Akufwado established a company called SFO Initiatives Limited, SFO. SFO Initiatives. Yes, the same, initi the same initials for the serious fraud office, the former serious fraud office. So it's that was established in 2013? 2013. SFO Initiatives. And you have here the director, Stephen Okoro, mm -hmm. Jankrumah Akufwado. Right. Then when President Akufwado became president, they incorporated more businesses together. 
Good Box Limited, Incorporated, 12 August 2020. Good Box. Good Box Limited. Good Box. And here, you what? have uh, Edwina Akufuado invited to the party. So you have Jankruma Akufuado, Stephen Okoro, and then Edwina Akufuado. For the, the Good Box Limited. Yeah, the presidential system. What is it established to do? So Good Box Limited, they were established to run gyms. That's the, the gym. objects of gym corporation. Service. Gyms. 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 Uh, I think for, for exercises. I don't know how many gyms they have established across the country. Then, um, eight days after that, on the 20th of August, they also incorporated a company called Good Grow. From Good Box to Good Grow. From Good Box to Good Grow. Good Grow Limited. Same actors. Jankuma Akufuado, Edwina Akufuado, Stephen Okoro. Same actors. Interestingly, Good Grow is established to grow and farm cannabis. Cannabis. You mean this company? Would yeah. Grow. Uh, what 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 the youth call ganja? Um, so um, so this is going to ganja farming. Now remember that a few days before this, uh, the I president's see. request to parliament had been approved that we should amend our uh, narcotics uh, control regime and legalize uh, yeah. marijuana for. Um, industrial purposes and pharmaceutical purposes. So this company Europe. was established. So this company was established to take advantage. Yes, to take advantage of that. Uh, they say that they want to go into growing and farming of cannabis for uh, the production of cannabidiol. That, that, that was that was there. So they are doing brace business. And between Stephen Okoro and Alvin Mensa, they have incorporated 42, 42 companies. 42 uh, companies 42 within companies. which period? Within the when Akufuado became president. You know, so, so they are doing brisk business across, my tracking indicates they're doing brisk business across from mining to oil and gas to um, uh, uh, construction, civil engineering, everywhere. They, 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 they are doing very well. Um, but so, you so see, what they, they, there? It's not they, wrong, right? they, they, it, if you read the modern corruption literature, mm -hmm. and, and President Kufado himself was very clear on that, and I'm glad that we have an anti-corruption expert here. All over the world now, there's greater spotlight on politically exposed persons. That is why in Parliament, when we were passing the Office of Special Prosecutor Law, that novel law, which President Akufado championed from opposition, that you have an Attorney General who is sitting in Cabinet with his colleagues, cannot really have the independence to right. take his colleagues on. So let's have an independent prosecutor. You know, in the law, we place emphasis on politically exposed persons, people linked to politics, because the corruption literature reveals that they are able to peddle influence. They are able to have, you know, access to decision makers. They themselves really become part of the decision making process. Mm -hmm. So politically exposed persons everywhere in the world. That is why President Kufuado himself, when he was running for president, told us that he will not run a friends and family government. Mm -hmm. You remember? Mm -hmm. He said that. Right. That his family members will not be awarding contracts or will not be receiving contracts. He said that. Uh, if viewers Google, you see it all over the place. Okay. You know, the president was very emphatic about that. So, this is worrying. I see. When you have politically exposed persons, you have business partners. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you see, what I don't normally talk about is that the relationship even goes beyond just business partnership. Indeed, Stephen Okoro gave the president his first grandchild. I mean, we cannot prove. No, no, no. I know for, that for, for a fact. So, we, I mean, so, we, no, no, no. We, I mean, we, we are talking we about. We cannot independently oh, you, verify that. Well, yeah, yes. I mean, yeah, because uh, because that, you haven't even attempted. In, indeed, because but you haven't you're, attempted you're, to independently just, verify. So now, now that you have said, we will. But yes. As of now, we we cannot. No, no, no problem. I, I give you that right. Uh, but uh, just go and check. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is. I'm surprised. This is well known. Uh, and and I mean, why? What's this is nothing wrong if people decide to uh, uh, make babies with whoever they decide. But, but the, the, the point is that the politically exposed linkage mm, is very, very clear. You cannot run away from that. And that is why you then connect the dots and see why Ken of Riata will be so keen without parliamentary approval a flagrant violation of Article 178 of our Constitution will still approve this $34.9 million unconscionable deal, instruct Control Accountant General to make releases, and despite a damning Auditor General's report, they will proceed to engage these same guys who have let this country down. 
in this 108 million. Think about the, the think, think about the figure. I mean, 108 million dollars. How 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 many billions of Ghana cities, new Ghana cities, is that? 108 million dollars. And okay. here we are. Mm -hmm. And you see, in this analysis, as I conclude, let me state that I have even been very generous with the analysis. Because as of 2022, when the Auditor General did this audit mm -hmm. report, this performance audit, he discovered that 16 of the ambulances are no more engaged in motor accidents, damage beyond repairs. 16. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and he, the analysis he did, because he said mm -hmm. that before this 307, the previous government had bought 130 ambulances, which were in the fleet. But they noticed that the ambulances, you know, we don't have a good maintenance regime. We don't even have premium insurance. So it was one of the recommendations that have pay premium insurance, insurance so that they can be replaced. So the analysis we have done with 307, we haven't been generous. There's, there's no guarantee now, as we speak, that we even have even 250. I of see. these 307 ambulances functioning, uh, and for which we are going to spend $34.9 million on spare oh. parts. And let me confirm to you, as I conclude, that the Office of Special Prosecutor has been in touch with me. They have formally communicated to me that they have opened investigations into this matter, following my complaint. They sent a crack team of investigators to my office spent over two hours retrieving all the documents, interviewing me, taking a statement from me. I see. And from what I gather, they are moving fast to stop. Because in my petition, I said that, look, it, the $24.9 million balance is imminent. They want to pay that. So urgently, they must move in to stop that. Because my only mm -hmm. motivation in doing all of this is to protect the public purse to at least salvage what is left, stop the hemorrhage. And, and, and I'm, I'm so far, I mean, really convinced that the OSP means well and that they will take steps to stop the yes. outstanding balance of $24.9 million and go into all of this, you know, this very, very stinky, opaque, well, horrendous transaction. And you, you know why I spent some time on this Auditor General's report on the, on the audit of these ambulances? Because based on that, you described it as a stinky deal. The company thinks otherwise. But the details you have given from the Auditor General's report on this audit of the ambulances also brings up a number of questions. Uh, so take your initial comment on this matter because it leads us to the next. And we're going to go for, for a break. And when we're back, we're getting to the uh, Dr. Tofosin, Richard Jackpa, the ambulance matter, and the acquittal and discharge of these persons and why the attorney general says he has a case in, in going to the supreme court to appeal the ruling of this appeals court on this matter but hearing this and making reference to this auditor general's report been glancing through it does it raise any fundamental cause for concern reason why we, sh we should have the even special prosecutor looking into it are you <clears throat> going to give me opportunity to speak at length or you want to go to the break and come back? This yeah, 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 because we'll, we'll, I would we'll, not want yes, to be indeed, yeah, interrupted indeed, once yeah, I, that's, I, that's I decide it, it, to do yeah, it's only a fair. serious yes, analysis. Yeah. Yes. So, so no, are let, you going let, to let, allow let, me, let me to take, speak or you rather have this your quick break. break? Yes, have your yes, break. Let, let me take, take this quick break and when we are back. But Mr. Kukujato Black, I appreciate your time. Thank you for this and for this detail that you've yeah. also given to us. And this is one that we're keeping an eye on, seeing how things will proceed afterwards. So thank you so much for coming. And uh, as a member of oh, Parliament for the for God and Country Day for, for, for the North Town constituency. He is also the chair of the Assurances Committee of Parliament. And this matter is of interest to that committee because the health minister appeared before them. Um, they, they've given him one week to furnish them with all the documents relating to this transaction. So it's one that we'll keep an eye on as well and see how things play out. Stay with us. We're back shortly after this quick break. This will segue into another ambulance conversation with one of the lawyers for Dr. Kislato Forsing joining us. Plus, I'll show you a video of where these ambulances in the Dr. Ato Forsing case are. We have a video of where they are. Mm -hmm. and the conditioning with the eye. 
stora skolbarkshockey.